Gracious God, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day for wherever we may be, whether we are in Arizona, New York, Guatemala, Austin, Cedar Park, Leander, wherever we may be, God, we, Valente, we know that you are with us. And so we pray that you would use this means of communication to bind us together, that your Holy Spirit would help us to feel as one and to be as one. We pray that you would enliven our minds and inspire our hearts as we look at statements of faith tonight. Let this time be a time of fun and joy. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, all right. So what I want to do uh, <clears throat> is I want to introduce to you our special guest tonight. Her name is uh, Jocelyn Stebbins. Jocelyn is an elder currently serving on uh, our session at the church. She is elder for worship and music. And uh, 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 Jocelyn, tell a little bit, if you don't mind, about your process of, of theological growth over the last four or five years. If you yeah, don't mind sharing. Absolutely not. So I... I guess it's probably about six years ago, I really kind of made a commitment to uh, just really grow into my faith and what that meant to me. And I actually started by going to the Lenten worship services, which, man, that's an experience because you are vulnerable and exposed and it's so quiet and it, it's just such a beautiful place to really start to uh, deepen your faith. Um so uh, I'd served as an elder before, back in, I think, 2006, but then um, served, served at, this is my fourth year, just an extended year on to uh, being an elder for worship and music. Um, and I am a presbytery junkie, so <laughs> I love to go to presbytery. I'm a nerd that way. And one of the processes at um, presbytery, one of the things that we do is we examine pastors. And um, part of that process is to look at their faith statements. So, like, I have been in so many car trips with Josh and Joel is, like, we break down what a faith statement is and really look at all the parts of it. Plus, I took this class three years ago, I guess, when it was first offered. And um, obviously, I was super nervous. I felt like I didn't know anything. And, you know, it was it was a really good class to just start to look at theology and especially reformed theology and what that means and um yeah i probably still really know nothing compared to most people <laughs> but um i it, i still am a nerd for it so i i love it <laughs> very good thank you so what is fun is once we start getting a little bit <clears throat> and i think after tonight i'm hoping that once we start to uh, get a little bit more comfortable with reading faith statements, we'll be able to see, again, some of those ways in which uh, uh, what is being expressed theologically, whether it is within reform bounds, outside of the reform tradition bounds, and, and really start to be inquisitive about, about what is trying to be articulated. So if you think about and you remember that that we have these confessions of the Presbyterian faith. We have these uh, 12 confessions that we have lifted up in our constitution. These are expressions of faith uh, that our denomination is saying, you know, this ex expands upon what we believe or builds the foundation upon what we believe and how we are who we are. Then uh, there are these persons like myself or Joel or anyone who's going into ministry and any one of you who would write a statement of faith expressing what it is that you believe and what uh, and, and it becomes to be a, a, an inside portal into uh, your own theological uh, uh, beliefs, which is, I think, a very encouraged, very good thing that you should practice doing. And we're going to look at tonight because there it comes in a whole variety of forms. Um, but what I what I hope that we're doing when we do this again, remember you've all graduated. You are all theologians now. Um, there's no backtracking. You cannot 
you cannot resign from being a theologian. You are all graduated theologians now. Um, so now we have to live into it. What I'm hoping that um, uh, we'll be able to do again is uh, is is in entering into dialogue with these with these um, uh, these statements of faith and asking them why do you believe why are you saying that you believe it this way or or really thinking about well what didn't they say or why didn't they say more um so the homework that i had you do is to take a look at your home church and uh, what a church that you would have been familiar with and to uh, go to their website, find their What We Believe or Our Beliefs page, and see if they have something there. Uh, as you're reading through it, circle or underline phrases that strike you, put an asterisk next to lines that or sections that need further reflection, like, hey, this just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and then I want you to be able to answer in your theological opinion, what's missing? and why. And in your theological opinion, because remember, you're a theologian now, where do you align with what's being said? Where do you disagree? Why or why not? And then finally, which uh, then when I provided you with three, and we're going to take a look at those, and I want to ask you which one of those three faith statements you, uh, you liked the most, which ones you liked the least, and why. And Sometimes it may be uh, based on what's, what is being written and what they said, and sometimes it might be based on the style and how, how, how it was written. And remember, today is a day of opinions. It is important for you to share your opinion. Um, I'm going to break you up into groups, and Jocelyn's going to go in one group. I'm going to stay with the other group, and um, let's see. Sign out of two breakout rooms. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to sign manually. I'm figuring out how to do all this. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Uh oh. Uh oh. Re recreate. Okay. Let's see. Uh, recreate. Okay. Options. Uh, I'm going to leave you in there. Let's say uh, 40 minutes at most. And um, let's see, I'm going to put in, let's see, where's Jocelyn? I've got to do that one. And, uh, Kitty and, uh, let's see, I'm trying to figure out, count Josh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's four. Uh, okay. And let's put, yeah, I think I got it now. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to send you out into a room and going into, uh, Jocelyn's room will be Gloria, John, Kitty, and Mike. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to open that up and then everybody else is going to stay here with me. So you should have to, there you go. So I should end up with Amber, Dave, Dave and Joan, Diane, Hillary, and Lori. Uh, fab tabuloso. This is going to be great. Although I can't see anybody but Dave and Joan. You're looking beautiful. Oh, here comes Dave Weiss. Uh, so, oh, oh my gosh, what a cotton-headed mini muggins. Hang on a second. Uh, I have a little bit of internet issues tonight, so. Kind of important. Uh, I think what I first want you to do uh, more than at the beginning is in the small groups, I want you to focus on those three statements of faith that I sent out in advance. And then after we get back, then I'm going to, we're going to debrief some of those and, and try to find some ahas 
Um, and I want to hear from everybody about which one you like, which one you didn't, and why. Uh, share your opinion. And then I'm going to do, uh, I'll share my screen, and we're going to go through as many of those websites as possible from your home churches. And let's take a look at those. So focus on those three statements of faith. Um, and I'm sorry to call you back in here, but now I'll kick you back out. Thank you. All right, let's see. Let me get you. There yeah, we are. Neighbors, be right back. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, were you all able to read these in advance? Take a look at these. No, that's okay. Do you have it, Diane? I can't hear you, hon. I don't have it. This is my first time to be here. Oh. I had some other issues going on on thursday night not a problem let me send it to you right now okay thanks uh and and we can work on these together that's not a problem i uh, i did scan through them i did not Diane. take the time to read them real carefully to that's tear fine them apart. we but, can do that work uh, together but i did i did pick up a couple of things that i have opinion about well why don't we uh why don't we do some of this work together? And Diane, I just sent it to your email. Okay. So uh, my picture will probably disappear. That's fine. Because I'm on my phone. But I I'll, understand. I'll check that's and fine. See. Okay, thanks. That's fine. And let's see. I'm going to ask uh, Amber, are you with us? And Lori, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Um, uh, hi, Lori. Hi. Okay, I'm glad you're with us. So do you have it pulled up, Lori? <laughs> what pulled up? The the handout yeah i've got it okay oh, great. i've got it on paper perfect well we're going to start off with that uh, statement of faith number one okay and i'm going to try and read these really quick and so if there's something that doesn't make sense or something you want to call out let's go ahead and do this live on, on the and just interrupt me and that's just fine so this first statement of faith starts out i believe that i belong to god I am God's creation. As an 18th century rabbi once said, I am but dust and ashes, and the world has created was created for my sake. I am the daughter of God, the great I am, who delights in me and calls me good. I am only one, I am one tiny yet beloved part of God's incredible love story with the whole world. I believe that God is, that God loves, and that God's love is the final word. When Moses asked God for God's name, the reply was, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. God is not object, not but subject. We are the object of God's love. In great mystery, God is far more than we can ever imagine, know, or comprehend. Yet, God comes close to us in Jesus Emmanuel. I have marveled at the Himalayas, at rhesus monkeys, and narwhals, at the Grand Canyon, at the glowing eyes of the three-month-old. The beauty of God, creator, is limitless. Still, God draws near. I have felt God in the darkest places, in dreams and voices, at the very limits of my endurance. My fear has always been met with God's gentleness. I embrace, embrace the mystery of God, Holy One, Holy Three, eternal outpouring, indwelling love. I believe in Jesus Christ, light from light, true God from true God, who became human to redeem all of creation. He was crucified, died, and was buried. But his love conquered death. I am made whole in Jesus Christ, redeemer of my flesh, friend of my being, the one who cast off my shame and lifted my eyes toward my God, my brother. His life continues to guide me in seeking right relationship with others. His death and resurrection contain the promise that love is stronger than death. The assurance of that promise has been sealed in my heart through baptism. I believe in the Holy Spirit, animating breath, God, the giver of life. I revel in and long for her touch. She is still, small voice, is the still small voice, the clap of thunder, the breath that fans the flames of my justice loving soul. She is friend, guide, and giver of wisdom. She is the necessary pause. I yearn for the communion of all God's people, give thanks for the forgiveness of sins, and hope for a time when all things are made new. I believe that we, the church, are invited to partner with God in bringing about the fullness of God's beloved community. 
While we live in the already, but not yet of this vision, I know one day we will dwell in peace together. This promise is lived out when we gather around the table together for Holy Communion. I believe in the Catholic Church, the Church Catholic, and find my personal understanding best reflected in Presbyterian denomination in which I was raised. I hold the Presbyterian Church's emphasis on grace and to the Reformed maxim, Ecclesia Reformata Semper Reformanda. To keep this in mind is to acknowledge our human imperfection and fallibility. Fallibility. Thank you. Uh, there are many things uh, that I question and doubt, but never this, quote, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 8, 35, 39. I know that to be true in the depth of my being. What's your hot take on this? On statement number one, what's your hot take? Well, for me, there's a lot um, that I think rings true, most all of it, that um, I would say is a good description of being very faithful. I, I stopped at short when it said Presbyterian domination, denomination in which I was raised, because in a sense, I have been raised here as my faith journey has become more serious since I joined Hope Church. But on the other hand, you know, I, as a child, and I was baptized in the Episcopal Church, and, you know, my early life was in the Episcopal Church. So that's kind of untrue, in a sense, for me alone. So it's kind of an odd thing for me to have in the middle of that phrase. Um, so I guess that's, a, that's the first thing I see. Yeah, how would how would uh, any one of you uh, how would you describe if you were to describe uh, this number one? What would you use to describe? How would you describe uh, it? Well, I think it was written by a teenage girl. Why do you think that, Dave? And by well, the way, it's okay to be critical. We're, that's the point no, of what no, this I'm is all about. I'm not being critical. I just, no, no, no. I, and, just, I mean, and professionally yeah, critical. I mean, we're yeah. you know, you're not being hypercritical. It's okay to to offer critique. No, that's not what that we're that's here wrong. For. Not that there's anything wrong, but I think that you know um, she mentions daughter a number of times. Um, she mentions the monkeys and the narwhals and things like that, um, which I you know I I don't know that a Oh, maybe an adult would write things like that, but I don't know. It just seemed, it just struck me as being written by a younger, young woman. Um, maybe uh, a, then, a little. And then she, you know, I, I don't know that that matters, but uh, she talks about the Holy Spirit being female, which is fine, you know, but I mean, that, that kind of, I, I stopped and read that again. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, 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 too, was raised in the Presbyterian church, so I didn't see anything unusual in there. Yeah. Uh, but. So did, in your descriptor of it, the way you describe it, does it sound a little informal or uh, touchy-feely? Yeah, maybe a little uh, immature okay. viewpoint, maybe. Okay. Like that. I okay. Don't know. It sounds like it has a lot of quotes from the Bible. Like, it's very, um, it, 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 it's not as... Um, uh, personal words or made up from their own thinking as much as it is quotation from the Bible. And interesting. Kind yeah. Okay. Kind of fits, kind of fits a form. Right? Okay. That's interesting because I thought it did both. What's that, Joan? Did both what? That, that it was personal and that it was it followed and emphasized with the scriptures. Yeah. Scripture quotation. Yeah, Diane. You're muted. Okay. Um, I got the idea that it was um, written by a female, I think, because they mentioned they were a daughter of God. Um, and, uh, but I looked at when they mentioned the animals, I kind of thought this was somebody who had had some travel experience and some experiences in life. Uh, they mentioned the Grand Canyon, so I feel like they might be older than teenage. 
I yeah. don't think they're as old as I am. <laughs> Uh, but I think it's somebody that's had some experiences in life, um, and they're kind of trying to, you know, connect it all. I was raised Presbyterian, but being raised pres in the Presbyterian church at that point in time in the church I was raised in, um, you know, we had Sunday school, but, you know, I, I, I certainly didn't learn any ways near the amount of information I've been able to learn as an adult in Bible study. Sure. Thank you. And, Thank you. And so I don't know that we thought that much about our faith. You know, I know, you yeah. know, we had confirmation, but I don't remember writing a faith statement like our eighth graders do when they go through confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, how about uh, Joan? Go ahead. I got the feeling that this was female, yes, young, but I'm guessing 18 to 25, young 20s, and possibly pre-seminary. Okay. With her ideas and then back with the uh, quotations. So do you think maybe um, someone post-seminary would have a little bit more depth? Is that, yes. is that fair? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Good. All right. Who, who, who'd we, Hey, here come the Denzins. How about that? Yay. Uh, I may kick you out though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm going to put you in a breakout room. Um, uh, uh, let's see, where are you? Here you go. I'm putting you in the other breakout room just to keep things balanced. Okay. And what we're doing first in that handout that I sent, there were three statements of faith. And so that's what we're going over first in the breakout time, okay? Okay, so I'm going to put you in this other group. Here you go. All right. Come again when you can't stay as long. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so, so good, good, good. Now, I, I like the way that, uh, thank you. I think that's good. Let me go ahead and jump into number two. I want to try to get through all three of these. Um, uh, Hillary said, I agree that statement one is the most, quote, touchy-feely or romantic take on faith statements. Disagree that it's an immature approach to, to faith or written by a teenage girl. And, and, and that's fair. I mean, I, I think... Um, uh, I think that's fair. I, I, I like the way that you describe that as the kind of the more romantic uh, take on that. And I want to come back to that uh, a little bit more. Let's hold that intention again. Um, remember, none of these, uh, I'm not talking about anything that is right or wrong. We certainly want to look at, and it's okay to be descriptive because I asked for that. Um, but is there anything that, you know, uh, and I think we could ask this one of the first one, was there anything missing? And, um, and, 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 and did that, um, uh, uh, and because if, if there were things that are missing, uh, does it leave you, uh, without the more complete idea of what this person believes if, but I, I think, uh, Hillary is correct. Yes, there definitely is this more romantic feel to it. And, um, I'm sorry, I know she's going to sign off, but, uh, I'll go ahead and say this now in case I don't lose her. Cause I, I know she's still listening, but the idea, uh, yes, there's a, there's a heavy bent of creation, uh, approach, uh, and the, like the first third of this statement of faith and, we talk about, and we're not doing a doc, a class on creation, uh, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, I really should have built that into the schedule and spent a whole evening talking about the doctrine of creation, in part because uh, uh, there, there's two ways in which we look at creation, or revelation, excuse me. Um, there's general revelation and specific revelation. And specific revelation is God being revealed to us specifically in the person of Jesus the Christ. That's a, a specific revelation. A general revelation is a lot more about what this person wrote, which is us being able to see the beauty of God in all of creation and the, 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 the beauty of the narwhals, the rhesus monkeys, the, the sunset. I'm a big fan of sunrises in the panhandle. 
It's the most beautiful thing in the world. And that always is transcendent. It, it causes me to be transcended uh, towards God. And that is a part of the general revelation. And so uh, on the scale of things, I would say that this first one, especially if you look at a lot of the uh, uh, creation poets, people who write a lot of poets who write a lot about um about creation and more of that, maybe even our, uh, agricultural uh, type poetry. They have this kind of general revelation engagement with God through the, seeing the beauty of the divine in the natural world around us, which is also, which I think is a, a good word. It is very romantic. Um, and, and I don't know uh, if that's what this person wrote that for is to express that or, you know, um, I grabbed this thing like so many years ago. I cannot remember for the life of me. I could never tell you who it belongs to. So, um, because even if I did, I wouldn't, but I, I really don't know who this belongs to. But, um, and therefore, I also don't know exactly what the purpose was. Um, uh, I, I, I do have a general idea what the purpose was, but um, what this person kind of had in mind or how they might have been prompted to have, have written it. Let's look at number two. Uh, number two, let me read it. Uh, I'm going on kind of uh, hyper mode here. The sole basis of our beliefs is the Bible, God's infallible written word, the 66 books of the Old and New Testaments. We believe that it is uniquely verbally and fully inspired by the Holy Spirit and that it was written without error, inerrant, in the original manuscripts. It is the supreme and final authority in all matters on which it speaks. We accept those areas of doctrinal teaching on which, historically, there has been general agreement among all true Christians. Because of the specialized calling of our movement, we desire to allow for freedom of conviction on other doctrinal matters provided that any interpretation is based upon the Bible alone and that no such interpretation shall become an issue which hinders the ministry to which God has called us. One, there is one true God eternally existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each of whom possesses equally all the attributes of deity and characteristics of personality. Two, Jesus Christ is God, the living word, who became flesh through his miraculous conception by the Holy Spirit and his virgin birth. Hence, he is perfect deity and true humanity united in one person forever. Three, he lived a sinless life and voluntarily atoned for human sins by dying on the cross as, cross as a substitute, thus satisfying divine justice and accomplishing salvation for all who trust in him alone. Four, he rose from the dead in the same body, though glorified, in which he lived and died. Five, he ascended bodily into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God the Father, where he, the only mediator between God and humanity, continually makes an intercession for his own. Six, Adam and Eve were originally created in the image of God. They sinned by disobeying God. Thus, they were alienated from their creator. That historic fall brought all people under divine condemnation. Seven, human nature is corrupted. As a result, all people are totally unable to please God. Everyone is in need of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Eight, salvation is wholly a work of God's free grace and is not the work in whole or in part of human works or goodness or religious ceremony. God imputes his righteousness to those who put their faith in Christ alone for their salvation and thereby justly uh, justified them in his sight. Nine, it is the privilege of all who are born again of the spirit to be assured of their salvation from the very moment in which they trust Christ as their savior. This assurance is not based upon any kind of human merit, but is produced by the witness of the Holy Spirit who confirms in the believer the testimony of God in his written word. 10, the Holy Spirit has come into the world to reveal and glorify Christ and to apply the saving work of Christ to individuals. He convicts and draws sinners to Christ, imparts new life to them, continually indwells in them, from the moment of spiritual birth and seals them until the day of redemption. His fullness, power, and control are appropriated in the believer's life uh, by faith. 11. Whew, this guy. Uh, believers are called to live so in the power of indwelling spirit that they will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but will bear fruit to the glory of God. 12. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, his body, which is composed of all people, living and dead, who have been joined to him through saving faith. 13. 
God admonishes his people to assemble together regular for worship, for participation in ordinances, and for edification through scripture, for mutual encouragement. 14. At physical death, the believer enters immediately into eternal conscious fellowship with the Lord and awaits the resurrection of the body to the everlasting glory and blessing. 15. At physical death, the unbeliever enters immediately into eternal conscious separation from the Lord and awaits the resurrection of the body to everlasting judgment and condemnation. 16. Jesus Christ will come again to the earth, personally, visibly, and bodily, to consummate history and the eternal plan of God. 17. The Lord Jesus Christ commanded all believers to proclaim throughout the world and to disciple people from all, every nation. The fulfillment of the Great Commission requires that all worldly and personal ambitions be subordinated to a total commitment to, quote, him who loved us and gave us, gave himself for us. Scene. Wow. This was hey. either written by an engineer or Joe Friday from Dragnet. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> just the facts josh just the facts dave you uh, why lead off uh I, I get the i get the humor uh lead off uh what's your hot take on this well i part of i mean part of this is is this is a completely technical document that was written you know like a, a project manager or something but i think um I I don't think this was written by a Presbyterian. Why? Well, he talks, to, he, I shouldn't say he, they talk about, um, where I think it was number eight. Number eight, I went, wait, what? Um, the, the whole, uh, you know, that wasn't the right one. Anyway, one of these really hit me in a, in a, 14. I, I don't think that Presbyterians believe in whatever it was this was. It was um, 14. Maybe, yeah. 14 and 15, it must have been. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's very succinct and to the point. And I don't I don't get anything spiritual out of it. Okay. It's a, you know what I mean? It's a technical document. <laughs> okay. okay. So uh, a swing of the pendulum from the first one, right? right? Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Dave, uh, uh, Cook? I, yeah, I would describe this as fundamentalist. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of um, clues do you have? Um, uh, oh. and, and yeah, what kind of clues give you that? You're fine. Um, well, it, it it's almost like this person knows it all and has no room for yeah. God being a mystery, that this is the way it's going to be. And, um, they're, and that, um, and that anybody who doesn't believe in all 17, then isn't, isn't a Christian. And, and, and even the entire first paragraph about, the Bible being, you know, the ultimate word. We're not, you know. Yeah. Uh, this is infallible. No one can deny it. That kind of thing. You know? Yeah. 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 It's uh, yeah. Interpretation is based on the Bible alone. There, yeah. there is no other room for any other discussion. Right. Given, given there may be other. It other was written rooms. by God Himself. Well, with a pencil. The and and Hillary said the statement too sounds very rigid. The one who described romantic on the first one swing that pendulum <laughs> the other way, yeah. and, and, and we've got rigid. The the uh, uh, Dave Cook, I, I appreciate the way that you said there. Uh, there's whereas the first one definitely has a lot of breathing room for the mystery of God, right? Uh, okay. There's very little. It's suffocating almost. And uh, vice, uh, according to that first paragraph, um, I, I'm glad that because if you remember, the first class we did was on scripture and I talked about uh, infallible and uh, I myself would hold to more of an infallible uh, uh, word of God. Um, but they continued on looking that last little bit there uh, and that it was written without error 
inerrant. Do you remember remember us talking about that, right? So what what I got probably a little um, curious about was when it said, uh, when you define it, written without error and errant, and then number six, when they started talking about Adam and Eve. And, and I don't know that I can tell by this whether or not this person holds the view that uh, the world is only six to 7,000 years old and, or whether or not they would accept that it's gajillion million years old. Um, I'm not sure I get a clear picture of how they would accept science. Um, um, and I think that's because there is so little room for the mystery. Um, uh, how about from somebody else? Julie, I, I meant to say welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, I hope you have the handout. We're looking at that statement of faith number two. Um, and, uh, and I know uh, Hillary's boarding the plane, but um, how about somebody else? Uh, does Amber or Lori or Julie, do any of y'all want to say I, anything? I, I can say something. Oh, um, please. And, and I'm not sure if I'm going to articulate this well. But what I found that I felt was missing from this statement okay. was a little bit more about what that means in your day-to-day -day life. Oh, yeah. So to me, to me, my faith is like belief is a doing verb. It's, it's a thing that like I try to comport myself in a certain way in my day-to-day -day life and, and do capital G good. And I feel like that's missing here. Like it, it it's almost like an afterthought. It mentions somewhere in here about living according to, according to the word, but it doesn't break down what that means as far as loving your neighbor and interacting with the world that we've been granted. It, to me, it just, it felt, feels very, I don't want to judge how other people experience their faith, but for me, this feels very empty because it doesn't have anything about how to live. This only talks about what to think and how to die and Ooh. to me that's not the purpose of faith i think you articulated that very well amber yeah. uh and you actually caused me to think yeah uh what's after number 17 yeah exactly. nothing right yeah. i mean i love matthew 28 uh matthew 28 says therefore i you know i i give you all authority to go out and baptize in my name the name of the father son and the holy spirit you know, go out to all the world and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And lo, I will be with you always, right? That's great. I love that. But then there's like Acts, right? And Romans and First and Second Corinthians. And then all the way up to, you know, uh, to, 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 you know, where we are today, right? Where are, where's, uh, where's a, an idea about, the the sacraments what's the, what's the value of sacraments that we have um and congregational life or or the mission of the church how do we live in response to this gift of 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 jesus the christ that has been given to us so i think if we take it as no a service. whole sorry dave uh, what were you yeah, saying no no sir no service for others yeah. yeah right so but if we take this as a whole yeah you're right i think what we see here is a a a, 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 a kind of a laser focused on salvation period as if there isn't life beyond that and that the most important thing is for you to accept salvation because if you don't number 14 you're going to eternal conscious, uh, oh wait, uh, oh, 15th, at physical death, the unbeliever, the unbeliever enters immediately into eternal conscious separation and awaits the resurrection and everlasting judgment, right? And, and, um, um, uh, and so there, there is, it's a, it's, it is, a, it's, oh, yes, have, bye, Hillary, uh, it is. It's very rigid. It's, it's very, very rigid. You either believe Jesus and accept salvation, and then you don't have to do anything else, or you don't believe in Jesus and you accept condemnation and sucks to be you. Um, but the Bible tells us everything we need to know that we're right and you're wrong, and and, and get on get on board or 
you know, get out of the way. Um, and, and, and I think that's, I think Amber is spot on. Absolutely. How do we live in response to this gift? You know, what is a church? What is, why should I go to worship? Right. And if I've accepted it, if I accepted the salvation and a gift that has been offered, why do I need to go to church? Right. There is the great commission that maybe I need to be a part of that commanded all believers to go proclaim the gospel. Okay. But what else? Um, and, and I think, I think that's, that's a, that's a great observation. Uh, anything else before I move on to number three? I, I just wanted to mention that the thing that, of course, everyone always sees things through their own experience. Of course. And this sounds, and I was in the Baptist church for a long time and several others. And this sounds like the mantra that's repeated over and over and over. In my view, it's stilted. It's judgmental. It, as you pointed out, and I really like how you said that it's my way or the highway and you don't fit that or believe it as it is, then, you know, I, I just, th this, to, to me, I, I almost can't talk about it because yeah. it, being judged by this scale over and over in our world of fundamentalism, it's one of the things in Christianity that's beginning to separate the different churches yeah. from yeah. each other. Yeah. And that, you know, they know them by their fruit. And that says that that's not good fruit. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Uh, and again, I, I don't remember where I grabbed it from. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm sure I could go look it up. No, I, I don't, I wouldn't know where to start. <clears throat> um, let's look at number three. And uh, we've got about eight to 10 minutes left. Number three, I believe in the one almighty triune God who is the creator of heaven and earth. As a crowning accomplishment, we are beautifully and wonderfully created in God's image to glorify and enjoy God forever. And we have been entrusted with a special charge to care for all of creation. I belong to God and will never lose God's love, even when my choice is to turn away and reject God. I am a sinner. With my words, actions, and inactions, I participate in the defamation of what God has declared good, both individually and corporately, and I deserve to be judged and punished accordingly. The Apostle Paul describes well who I understand myself to be as a sinner in Romans 7.19, quote, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I do, end quote. However, I believe in a God who is full of grace and mercy. I believe in Jesus the Christ. For the sake of all humankind, God chose to be revealed in the person of Jesus Christ and became flesh and lived among us. Because Jesus lived a sinless life on, my, on our behalf, only he was uniquely able to atone for our sins with his death on the cross. Having stood in our place and received the punishment we deserved, his sacrifice forever bridged the gap between us and God. When Christ descended into hell, he demonstrated that there isn't any place God isn't willing to go, is not willing to go for our salvation. His resurrection after three days demonstrated that as death's conqueror, God's power is unmatched and we are freed from fear. His ascension to heaven demonstrated that Jesus Christ reigns victorious as our Lord and Savior, and that as we read in John 14, 3, he goes and prepares a place for us and comes again to take us there personally. In scripture, we learn that Jesus is the only way to be in union with God, and in Christ, we are promised eternal life. We proclaim Christ's salvific name until he comes again, ushering in a new age in God's eternal kingdom. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit calls us out of our comfort zone and stagnant lives of despair and gives us strength to repent from our sins and equips us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. In our weakness, the Holy Spirit intercedes to help us overcome adversity. The Holy Spirit gives us hope and supports us in overcoming our sinful nature, and then we are set afire to proclaim the good news of the gospel and Christ's saving grace. We come to learn the truth of God's message and the scriptures through the Holy Spirit who aided in their development. I believe in one 
Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. The Holy Spirit calls people into community and worship God. Quote, the mission of the church is given form by God's activity in the world as told in the Bible and understood by faith from the Book of Order. The church, therefore, actively seeks to be a voice for social justice, to love the act of loving the poor and the oppressed, and to do all things humbly in the name of Jesus the Christ. The church is not an institution on Main Street or a building on Am Street, but rather a collective body of Christ coming together to give glory to God through worship, prayer, and service to others. We are called to live in response to God's grace and to celebrate the promise of eternal life. In worship, we are united together as one body of Christ to sing, praise, and pray for others and offer thanksgiving, publicly commit our lives to following Christ, experience the living word through the reading of scripture and its exposition through sermon and partake in the sacraments. The sacraments of baptism and Eucharist are instituted by Christ to serve as a visible sign of God's presence and action in the world. Baptism demonstrates the death of our separation from God and the birth of our new life in Christ and unfolds us into the body of Christ. Eucharist reminds us of the covenant of grace we received in Jesus Christ, and by it, we are nourished and sustained to live lives in service to Christ in the world. At the table, God heals a broken community, reconciles us to God and each other, and sustains us by the Holy Spirit to live a life that reflects God's great and wondrous work. Scene. All right, we got about four or five minutes. Let's see. Lori said, this reflects the most with my beliefs of the three. I would like to, to, if you don't mind sharing why, Lori, I'd love to hear that. You don't have to, but if you wouldn't mind, that would be great. Am I, I'm okay. Are you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, it brought out the main things I believe in from the faith that uh, the statement of faith that you know was reflected, and I, I think it covered the main things that we believe. It just spoke to me right right away, mm -hmm. and I realized that th they hit the things that I I don't know that I believe the most. Okay, I okay. can't articulate this, but it really really did. Well, good. No, that's great. That's great. Let's get somebody else. Um, I think this was definitely written by a pastor, possibly Josh. Um, it's got a very good explanation of each and how to go about um, understanding each belief. Um, and um, what was another comment I was going to make? I can't see what it was. Now. I don't remember. I, I, um, you know, I, I'll just add that what really struck me was at the uh, bottom of the first page in um, mm -hmm. under belief in one holy Catholic apostolic church talks about um, what the church is not an institution or a building, but, but, the, but being in service to others and in community with the people that we live with. And, and I think that's more, um, more central in the way that I like to think about our faith. Okay, thank you. Uh, the I thing, Barry, that uh, was the, uh, he, yeah. he got my, he got my statement. <laughs> there it is. Okay, Julie. Yeah, yeah. The, thing that strikes me about this is it's holistic. It is, it covers the different, in my mind, major tenets of Christianity that is built around acknowledgments of not only who I am, who Christ is, who God Almighty is, and yet guarantees promises that he has made to us. And it has that appeal when you compare it to the other two, the, the other two don't have this well, well rounded view of our relationship with God Almighty, Christ God Almighty. So if you were plotting this on the bell curve, Julie, well, maybe not bell curve, but the, we were talking about the pendulum, right? Um, you, you had one that was very rigid, one that was pretty romantic, 
I don't know of an R word that I would use for this other than reformed, but, um, but this is, and I don't necessarily mean to intentionally put it in a middle, uh, but um, I, I'm wondering, and, and I'm thinking about, uh, remember all, all season long, I've been talking about the playing field, right? That, that sometimes people, when they're doing the, their theology, they like to stay in like the 20 yard area and they never play the whole playing field. They just play in a small portion of this 100 by 50 yard rectangle. And, um, and I feel like in some ways, like number two does that. We talked about that being very rigid, that it just kind of is, it's just in this little, this little pocket area. And number one may not, it, it's not necessarily out of the bounds, but it's not really an organized play. And I know, would you, how would you feel and put in that analogy of things, putting that, um, putting number three on the playing field? I, I I agree with that. I you know I th I think when you think of it in a graphical nature, it it uh, to me, and I think this may be what you're saying is we're able to play throughout this entire field, as okay. opposed to one little narrow stretch here and there, okay. and that's that's the appeal, and it also acknowledges the fact of the the infinite. Uh, the infiniteness of God and that he allows space for us, all of us in that field area. Cool. 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 Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. And welcome back everybody else. I hope that that was as good for you as it was for me. Uh, uh, Hillary, uh, she hung in there until her plane was taking off and, uh, put your phone in airplane mode. She had to turn off. So, uh, but she did get to get, she contributed and, um, and, and left us with some thoughts before she had to sign off. And so uh, what I'd like to do in the time that we have left is um, kind of debrief. Uh, what are some of the, t the hot takes that you had uh, in your breakout group um, and things that you want to put forward? And I'm going to pull this out uh, on looking at one, two, and three of those faith sta those statements of faith, um, you know, uh, which one did you feel more connected with? Which one did you feel the least connected with? Or, or, or how would you describe them? What is your your hot takes on these? And um, was there any kind of consensus, or were there were there any words or any phrases that stood out as a as as uh oh yeah i really jive with that or no that's a deal breaker um uh so let's hear from whoever wants to go first this is a time for us just do some debriefing uh diane i think that i feel like number three is the one i most relate to but i really liked number one uh Good. maybe it was because it was so different or kind of romantic, just a very different type of faith statement. I felt it was very heartfelt and really came from the heart. I didn't like number two. Uh, it was too rigid and, you know, I, I, I know it was brought up in our small group that being Presbyterians 14 and 15 about death and afterlife seemed to be a little different from what we normally believe. Um, but I don't suppose that I, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to say that I certainly know everything about that. You know, I only know what I've been taught. And for most of my life, I've been a Presbyterian. There were some years when I was married that we went to the Catholic church. So that's a whole, whole nother ball of wax. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's somebody else. So maybe someone from the other group, from Jocelyn's group. I can say just like briefly do a brief overview of the first okay, one. Please. The first one that stood out on the statement number one was um, how they spoke in gender, you know, re referring to the writer referred to themselves as the daughter of God and referred to the Holy Spirit as feminine. Um, so that was one of the things that stood out, um, that it was very flowery, written with prose, and but it's sometimes uh, easy to get lost theologically in it. 
you're trying to find the theology amongst all the words. Um, uh, I think Kitty said it could be written from a teacher's perspective, maybe because the uh, Kitty, can you elaborate on that one? I thought that was interesting. Got to unmute there. Justin, may I add to that? And, and I was not part of 75, 80% of uh, that conversation with her group. But I, number one, I think there's something about the simplicity of a key statement in number one. And, and in fact, it says it twice. I believe that I belong to God. I'm God's creation. Very simple. And then at the end, there are many things that I question and doubt, but never this, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers, we know those words. And man, that's that's a great beginning and a great ending for statement of faith number one, in my opinion. Cool, cool. Uh, Kitty, what were you gonna say? Um, she talked about, and I'm assuming it's a she, um, God as the, object not the subject and i in my my mind i'm thinking grammar back mm -hmm. into school of grammars with object and subject and everything yeah. and that's why i thought maybe a teacher's perspective okay good good um uh, anybody from uh, my group anybody else from my group dave I kind of agreed with Diane. I, I like the last one, and I, having gone through the elder training, it sounds very familiar. But um, the uh, the first one was, you know, it kind of it was kind of like a Maharantha version of a statement of faith, maybe right? It was more like a, uh, you know, written in the seventies. You know. <laughs> This you know, is the um, dawning of the age right. of Aquarius. <laughs> right. Age of Aquarius. Pretty much. Yeah, that, that was the impression I got Aquarius. from that. The third one, you know, the third one was written by Joe Friday of Dragon. <laughs> well, this this is here. I'm sorry, the second one. Second one, yeah. Don uh Jeannie. I'm just saying that I, you know, we, we got here obviously late, but my eyes just landed on the statement of faith number one and in the middle. I believe in the Holy Spirit, animating breath of God, the giver of life. I revel and long for her touch. She is still, she is the still small voice, the clap of thunder, the breath that fans the flames of my justice loving soul. She is friend, guide, and giver of wisdom. She is the necessary pause. Oh my. Oh, <laughs> I've never heard that or read that or whatever. I mean, I, I like it. Maybe it's because it's like a female writing it and I'm a female, but. Maybe that is the age of Aquarius. I don't know. But. Well, uh, uh, Hillary, before she took off, what she had said is it, um, uh, let's see. Uh, I agree. A statement number one is the most touchy feely or yeah. romantic. And, uh, and, and so she used the word romantic on statement number one and the word rigid on statement number two. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we talked a little bit about, yeah, this person has a poet's soul um, yeah. uh, in that regard. And, and in doing so, uh, it certainly artic articulates a, a, an artistic beauty of theology. Um, but what's missing, what might be missing? What, what's get, what, what gets left on the cutting room floor, Jeannie? Uh, uh, or anybody? Well, I don't know, just some basically basic things. I believe God and God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all that is seen and unseen and that. There. Well, I just jumped in on the middle of that, and that that's not in yeah. that yeah. speak. That's okay. It's not yeah. in here. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. that's what made me think, wait a minute. It just because it's not in the God talk I'm used to, or whatever you want to call it, is it valid? So I don't know. I'm I'm still yeah. kind of wrestling that's with it. Okay, that. good. Good. Uh John. 
So, I, I mean, it, obviously, I, I think they spent a lot of time writing it um, and, and get it, writing it. I don't think they sat down and that just flowed out of them necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but they left out, for me, the reflexive part of it. What, you know, these great statements, but what did it, what was the impact on them? How, wh how was, how was their faith um, guiding them personally or like the, and, and that was also missing from the second one, I think. Um, but in the third one, there were specific instances of, you know, hey, you know, because Jesus went down to hell, that demonstrates to me that there's nowhere that he won't go to, mm -hmm. you know, save me or mm -hmm. meet me where I am. I, I forget, but that, that was the sense I got from the third one. Mm -hmm. The other thing in our group, we, we talked about, like, you read the first one, it's pretty optimistic and, and positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one, not so much, <laughs> you know, um, and some, some, whereas there was some great, like, prose in the first one and some, some um, flowery or romantic obvious word choices. Um, the, the, the second one, there were some rather, I don't know, unusual word choices. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the 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 one about Christ uh, dying for us as a substitute on the cross, okay. you know. Well, uh, stay tuned because we're going to have a whole session on that coming up in, in the weeks ahead. <laughs> like, uh, yes, uh, Christ was my proxy, you know, at the cruise. <laughs> <Yeah. of Christ. laughs> uh, well, it, that's 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 well, and I'm going to come to Gloria now, but uh, yeah, well, the, the one theory good. the theory of atonement, John. Uh, that's one theory of atonement. And we're going to dig deep into that uh, coming up about, uh, because that, that's, that's, I, I said, I'm, we're I'm not come saying it that. was wrong. No, I'm but it is, it is a word choice I have never seen. Yeah. I would not have picked myself. And for someone like me, it's not abnormal at all. Uh, uh, and, and, and so I appreciate that. Uh, Gloria, I'm sorry, please. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, we, we commented that, uh, in the second one where the she is used for God, that to me, and, and we can imagine God as being androgynous, both male and female, both mother and father. And we are that way. If we are females, we have more of the female part active. But uh, I didn't have any problem with uh, this person referring to God as she, but I thought, well, maybe this is the Me Too mo movement person. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I mean, well, uh, I was introduced into uh, feminine pronouns. Uh, uh, let me just say that uh, in the Bible, in Hebrew, Mm -hmm. um and, and and i do not speak spanish but uh i'm gonna lean on you because i know you do right you have nouns that have uh, a gender correct yeah. right and so yes. in hebrew it's the same as well and anything related to the spirit in the old testament are feminine, feminine. nouns are feminine mm -hmm. verbs and so it's biblically not inappropriate um uh and it may even be biblically inappropriate to not ascribe uh, the the feminine to to the Holy Spirit, so there's certain there's academically it's that's very sound. Guy. What's that? Yeah, there's that second guy who. Well, wrote, Dave, you know, ta tell us about the second guy in that regard. Tell us about the second guy. Well, it just seems like to me it was written by a project manager for an engineering application, but it's a uh, it's a very. Uh, rigid and and fixed this is the way it is oh you know beat it if you don't believe me you're wrong beat it you know yeah so. i'm sorry no, Gloria, I, you weren't done I, go ahead I, I think that isn't that a belief that when god is when god acts he's masculine and when god receives or when there's a receptor that is feminine I don't know. I will have to look at that. I, I, I don't I think know. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to pay more attention to that. I don't have an immediate answer for you, but that that's fascinating uh, of a thought process. It, yeah, it is. Um, there's something very um, uh, coital about that. I have to yeah. think about. The, uh, the Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. You're on mute. 
one I'm sure it things, was great. <laughs> one of the things we noticed about the second one also is there was no mention of the sacraments, neither baptism yeah. or yeah. communion. Yeah, why? <laughs> what, 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 what happens there? Why not? What, 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 why, why is that important? I should ask. Oh, Jocelyn. why? Okay, Cause I, it's, uh, for me, it's a, it's, we're commanded to do those. Like Christ commands us. I mean, there's, it's a huge, the baptism. It's, yeah, it's, it's well, essential. <laughs> uh, the number two does say, look at number 17. Uh, the Lord Jesus go. Christ commanded, commanded, all believers to proclaim the gospel throughout the world and to disciple people from every nation. This is from Matthew 28. The fulfillment of the great commission requires that all worldly and personal ambitions be subordinated to the total commitment to him who loves us and gave himself for us. So it sounds to me like what's being commanded of us is to go out and save souls. Yeah. So why, why would you include anything else if that's the great commission? Recall oh, I, I, uh, you know, I think, oh. go ahead, Don. But. Wasn't it Philip in the chariot with the uh, Ethiopian eunuch or whatever it was? First thing they did after yeah. the Ethiopian accepted Christ was to, what, baptize him. Baptize him. Good. And Jesus was baptized. Good, good, Dave. Good. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that that those things like, um, you know, having communion is, shows us to be in community with the people around us. And, and, um, and it shows how we need to be together in serving and helping each other. And, you know, those, there really isn't anything in the first or the second that talks about um, serve others, follow Jesus to serve others. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's all about what is it that the bible says that we should do yeah well um, if you, about what jesus has demonstrated for us yeah absolutely if you think about it um I'm, I'm going back to our doctrines we've done scripture trinity providence and sin and um what we have is um the there's a the the, the lack of well well now what uh, is there. And I think our group talked about with regard to number two is, is it stops at Matthew 28, but even Don just now said, well, what about the rest of the new Testament? Right. I mean, what about acts and Romans and Galatians and first and second Corinthians and James and Peter? I mean, what, what about the rest of the story, you know, and, and, and yet it just kind of stops. Right. And so, and what about today? right what about how what is our how do we live this out today and 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 and, and what roles do the sacraments uh, what is the church like do you get from number 2 how they you know what is a church in the statement of number 2 what is church can you figure that out uh, uh, and so that, that and so for me the challenge that I feel like I have there and, and Dave Cook has mentioned too about number one a little bit there as well which is so what's our what's our calling what's the capital C church's calling not only of how we go out and like Dave was saying um, um, follow Jesus by serving others but but how do we also live as an us? Right. You know, how do we form ourselves into a Christian community in a world that is counter to that, is constantly trying to break that apart? Seaman? Uh, in in uh, our group, we noted that the third statement actually quoted from the Book of Order, which may be the only faith statement ever written that quoted from the Book of Order. What a dork. So, exactly. <laughs> Say yours. Yeah, number three is mine. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> uh, uh, number three is mine. I know where that one came from. I have no clue where number one and two came from. Uh, I've read so many and I've received so many over 12 years. I, I, I legit have no idea where I got those from. Uh, but likely uh, where I probably would have pulled them from are statements of faith that have been submitted to Presbytery for us to approve. Uh, these are mostly all I would pull from are from people who are 
candidates for ministry. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and one of the things, uh, so I thank you for uh, now three years ago when I did this and I didn't tell people, I never told people number three was mine because they were pretty harsh. Um, (laughs) They're like, wow, this one sounds like, so like a robot. That was the word they use. This sounds like a robot, you know, I was like, Oh geez. But you know what I noticed tonight and listening to y'all, which I have never noticed before. And uh, is number one, um, it does have gendered language and it, it, it expands in using the feminine language uh, with God. Number two, exclusively male gendered, right? Um, and my number three, no gender. It, gender fi- the gender is related to Jesus and Jesus only. Uh, otherwise, I don't use gender in mine. And I haven't done that since 2009. So most of the time when you hear me leading worship, you will not hear me uh, use a gendered pronoun uh, for God um, uh, or, or the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, and, and that can be a barrier for some and a great welcoming for others. Um, so I, I know that I chose to write mine the way that I did with regard to gender. I didn't realize today that I had this, that the, the three um, those hadn't been pointed out before uh, uh, in, in, in that way. John, were you going to say something? Oh, yeah, now that now that you stepped up and took ownership of the third one. Well, Joan uh, Cook, she knew it at, right out of the gate. I, I, I she was like, oh, that's Josh's. No, because you said your, your second bolded statement was Jesus the Christ. Yes. The way. Oh. And you quoted the Book of Order. So it's either you or Joel. Actually, that's um, not right. The Book of Order. Um, uh, the, my second one, uh, I, I'm happy to tell you how I came across writing mine. This is my uh, second version. And uh, if you look at, if you look at John, Jesus Christ isn't number uh, two. I'm sorry, the third. The third uh, I'm looking at it. Now. I specifically wrote mine to follow the reformed order of worship. Mm-hmm. And if we look at the Bible, it flows this way as well. What do we see yeah. in Bible? It's God, God first, then there's sin, there's Jesus, the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and how we live our life in response. And nice. uh, uh, so I wrote that very specifically that way. The, the, the first version, now, uh, the first version I wrote, I think I put sin, uh, no, I just put uh, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. I didn't even write a paragraph on sin uh, in 2009. Um, um, and so, uh, but I, I specifically wanted to write mine following the flow of both the Bible and what we do in worship. And um, we, go ahead. We, we had a little side a little discussion about, um, I mean, I'll go back and look at it here real quick, about where you, the, the bottom where you said uh, in your bolded part about believing in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. The first sentence after that says the Holy Spirit calls people into community to worship God. Yeah. And I, I'd never heard that that was um, a, a role or a responsibility of the Holy Spirit. And I wondered where you got that from. Is that somewhere in the gospel? Well, uh, yes, Acts, uh, the, the, the book of Acts, right? So at the day of baptism, what do you have, John? What's the story of the day of baptism? Anybody? Acts chapter uh, one, Acts one. I think it's Acts one. What's the story of uh, the 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 day? What's the day of baptism like? What happens? All dressed up and you get some cake. <laughs> we all dress up in what color, Dave? Get a wet head. You're white and you get some cake. Shut and, up! And you Come get on, little, Dave. You get, You're killing you little, me here, Holmes. You get a little bath. Josh walks you around the sanctuary. That's no. baptism. That's baptism. I said the day of Pentecost. What color is the day of Pentecost? Oh, red. Red. Hey, there we go. Okay. 
Uh, Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit, right? It is the what, John? It is what we acknowledge as the birth of the, the birth church. Of church. So in the reception and the receiving of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit came upon them and it looked like fire, tongues of fire above all their tongues heads. Fire, yeah. And all tongues. these people from all these languages were able to speak and understand each other. And so you see that the Holy Spirit is immediately galvanizing this movement, bringing these people into community into relationship with each other and forming the church and on that day how many people were baptized five thousand yeah. five thousand yeah yeah right so yeah the, the the holy spirit calls us into into community okay no i i i to worship god i was sort of i was sort of pentecost is the holy spirit coming down and blasting them with with strange tongues so that they could go out but again to bring people into community and it right? does that too right so acts one we get the birth of the uh, of, of the church right you know this this community being instituted acts two right uh, acts two chapter verse two verse 42 right they held all things in common you're seeing the early formations of now we've pulled all these people together how do they live well, they shared their goods. They did everything for the benefit of the whole. Acts 3, what do you get? You get these two dorks who didn't, who held back. And what happened to those two guys? Right? No, I, I get that. I, I get that. I get your, your, your presenting it as a, the arc of the book of Acts. Um, I just thought it might have been in one of Paul's letters or something where he explicitly said, hey, the Holy Spirit is calling you, guiding you to come you know, like do not forsake the gathering kind of thing. Yeah, I, and maybe there is, John. I, I accept that maybe there is. I, I don't know that I pulled upon that. But no, it's better uh, as a story arc is yeah. the, you know, the, the yeah. meta theme. So, so what I think we get with all of this, and I want to, I want to pivot. I want to, I want to give anybody else final words. Um, and I want to pivot to some of these websites and, and take a look at that. But um, what I'm hoping that you see, there is a diversity here, right? Each one of those, none of those, as, as, as it was said, none of those just pulled out of thin air, right? I think I spent around 60 hours on my <laughs> first draft, on my first version. I might have spent close to 60 hours on that first version trying to get the wording right, to be faithful to what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. right? And I also didn't want to just cop out and just say, see the Apostles' Creed, right? Because that doesn't do much for me either, right? See the second Helvetic confession that didn't do anything yeah. for, for anybody. Uh, see the book of, conf the, the book of con confessions, you know, that didn't do anything for me. Uh, that doesn't articulate what I believe. And, um, and, and, and so we know, and we can respect that the authors of one and two, they invested a lot of time in trying to express, they have studied, they have prayed, they, they, they wrestled. They probably went on a ton of walks trying to figure out how best do I say this. They scrumpled up their paper and they threw it away. Um, Jocelyn, I know that you have worked uh, in your heart, head and your heart. How, how many aversions have you been through over the years trying to I express that? Well, but and we talked about that too, how a statement of faith is almost fluid because what I would have written five years ago is not what I'd write today. I'm in such a different place today. It's not what I would have written before May. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in such a different place. So statements of faith, I think, have to have fluidity in them also because we change. You know, uh, we're reforming. It's like, Always reforming. Yeah. And Gloria, what's the, what's the Latin? I can't think of the Latin. Ecclesia reformanda semper reformandi. Yeah, it was in the first statement of faith, and Gloria yeah. pointed that out, and it, it was beautiful because we are always reforming. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, I, what I would go ahead, Gloria, please. Well, one interesting thing that is that you included hell in it, uh, in your statement. Why do you pull that out, Gloria? Huh? Pardon? Why are you pulling that out? Why are you highlighting that, Gloria? Uh, well, in, in the other one, I think it was in number two, said something like, uh, God went to, I mean, Christ went to hell. So I know that Christ wouldn't, would go anywhere to save me, even yeah. hell. Yeah. And, uh, but my question was, well, if we are all saved by God, 
um, by Christ in the cross. Um, why is there hell? Yeah, stay tuned for the rest of the story. We're going to get there. Uh, Next John, week. John started to explain what Joel had said. Joel? I don't care about Joel. He's dead to <laughs> me. I couldn't, remember, I couldn't remember whether it was you or Joel, but Jocelyn and I both remembered a class and then a sermon about, you know, and then the whole thing with the the uh, the class where we would watch the videos of the mm -hmm. uh, near death experiences. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark yeah. Mark Rose's story about yeah. knowing that guy. Yeah. Well, uh, stay tuned, Gloria, because next week it, we're going to talk about Jesus. Two weeks from now, or three weeks from now, we're going to be at salvation. So we're going to get we're going to hit both of those uh, in the time to come. Uh, and I've, I've not shied away before from saying that I don't have a doctrine of hell. Now, I wrote the sentence because it is something that we read within the Bible and in our confessions. And even though I don't hold a theology or a doctrine or a concept of, of hell, I think I also don't I also don't believe that Adam and Eve uh, are, you know, um, uh, walk the earth uh, I, just as much as I don't believe that there was. A, a, a true flooding of the entirety of the world or uh, an Adam and Eve that doesn't, doesn't diminish the value uh, of what I learned or what God is teaching me through that. And, and I feel the same in that regard too, which why I feel that it demonstrates there isn't any place that God isn't willing to go for our sake, any, any depths that God isn't willing to go for our sake. Um, now, that being said, uh, I want to move on to uh, what I'm hoping will be good for you as you go back and maybe look at some of these websites. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. So your screen's about to get real funky. Uh, let's see, where do I want to go? Let's go here. Okay. You should see, uh, let's see, where do I want to go? I'm trying, I have too many tabs open. Uh, all right. So this first one uh, is from, I'm going to have to pull this up in a minute. Uh, Amber is with us and Amber uh, texted me today and she was like, you know, I went to four of the churches that I've been a part of before and none of the four of them had a we believe or a statement of faith page. And so she said, I went to my sister's church and that is just fine. And, and I think what I would have all of us do is well, is asked, well, should a church have some ideas that articulate what it is that they believe on their webpage? Um, should they not? But if they, if they don't, why? And if they do, why? And we don't have to answer that. Um, but I, that's what I would want you to, to think about. And, and in part for me was, is that I wouldn't want you, if you, I don't want you leaving this church, just so you know, but let's say you have a friend who was exploring a church in Alaska. Um, you know, I would want them to be able to go to a website and that our website articulates who we are and what we're about, that there isn't any guessing. There's not a, a bait and switch. There's not a, uh, a, 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 a Shanghai shuffle going on here. I just made that term up. That sounded really alliterative and good. Um, you know, that, you know, they're clear. This is who we are. We know who we are. We know what we're about. And therefore, we're going to put it on our website. So you don't have to ask. You don't have to guess or feel worried when you come um, uh, because we know what we're about. So Amber sent this one. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just simply say that one of the things that I really liked about this is they did it. They called it Statement of Faith. And boom, let me tell you about the Bible. 66 books, verbally inspired. I don't know how you know it was verbally inspired. Uh, and therefore, holy without error. Well, this tells me a little bit about the church. Um, the one true God, Jesus Christ. They've got Bible citations. So just looking at this alone, you know that they have a lot of biblical, you know, biblical citations and are upholding the concept of the Bible uh, truly as they intend it to be, as a definitive without error, you know, much like number two that we were reading uh, a second ago. Uh, and they go through uh, the ordinances. This is another word for the sacraments, um, uh, baptism, communion, 
uh, sometimes we'll find uh, websites of churches and, and that that will intentionally leave off the sacraments, or they will uh, minimize them to you know they're good to do, but they're not that important. Uh, we're a sacramental, we're a high sacramental denomination, the the Presbyterian Church. Uh, got a little something here on Satan and what's coming later. So even the one that number two, this is the Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. Uh, you know, even like that number two that we were reading, right? They, they didn't even talk about the second coming and future life, right? They just, boom, they just, they ended it uh, 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 right there. So that is Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. Now, University Presbyterian Church, I think this was, who was this one? I don't remember. Um, where did I see this one? What city is this in? Seattle. Who sent us this one? Anybody remember? Somebody who's not here. All right, I'll come back to it. Uh, Westminster Presbyterian Church. Hey, Kitty, unmute yourself. Now, uh, side story. Um, uh, uh, Kitty, my grandmother, Kitty's mother, and father were charter members of this church in Amarillo. And uh, we had at least one, did we not have two of the uncles, two of your uncles were pastors, yes. two, two of our, my grandmother, Kitty's uh, mother's brothers were pastors at this church. So when I say it's the family wow. church, it, it, it's like legit the family church and, um, and not anymore. So, right, uh, it's not the church I grew up in. Yeah, well, what was a, a takeaway for you, Kitty, in, in looking through this? Is there anything that you saw or felt or, or noted or something that you would pull out? First of all, I had to look up a bunch of words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joan, uh, going back to, oh, I think it was Joan who was saying that earlier, or maybe it was Dave. Joan and Dave both were like, you know, talking about, you know, reading engineer manuals, right? Yeah. I had to go, you know, I had to go look this stuff up. And and there is a, a an off-putting, or maybe it was John who was talking about one of my words or something, right? There's an off-puttingness. There is a, 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 a keeping, a, an, an insider language that makes it difficult for us um, to feel like we can have some connect, you know, accountable community, egalitarian ministry, right? Go ahead, Kitty. Well, that was one of the words I had to look up. I didn't know what an ECO was either. Ah, oh, here we go. I had to look that up. So, uh, yeah. What else? Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I, learned, I learned that they broke away from the USA mm -hmm. because they did not want gay clergy. Yeah. yeah. So, well, you know, the, that, that was going to be the thing I'd said, Josh, because it, my Westminster church had said the same thing under the egalitarian. It said men, women, and all ethnicities, but it left out any reference to LGBTQIA plus communities, which yeah. would make it not egalitarian. Yeah. Whoo, snap. Um, um, I, I would take their terminology egalitarian uh, uh, more specifically meaning that it is uh, the movement of people. So egalitarian for me would be truly Presbyterian, right? We're ruling by elders, we're congregational based um, and all who are within that body. Uh, and so I could, I mean, I, I could honor that word, but yes. Those not ways, in how they subsequently define it though. That's correct. That's not, not they don't talk they, about governance. Not how they subsequently define it. So yes, this was a PCUSA church until they broke away and became a part of the uh, covenant order of evangelical Presbyterians and specifically over related to sexuality. So um, yeah, so so again, a little bit more there. Had to look up some words, right? You know, little <laughs> little uh, detached, so to speak. Uh, you, this one. Gosh, if you if you go back to that other one, the very last bullet there, I thought was interesting too. Um, the kingdom kingdom vitality. vitality, reproduce new missional communities. Yep. What do you think that means, John? Uh, you go out and, and uh, evangelize and um, uh, missionary focus. Move once oh. you're 
part of this church, you move out, you set up a new one. Sounds to me like be fruitful and multiply. Church planning. That, that too. Church planning. That's what this is about. It's about yeah. starting new churches and all around the world and bringing people to, to salvation. Um, saving souls for Jesus. Uh, this one is Alamo Heights Presbyterian. This is one that uh, Hillary had visited and that she sent. Uh, this is one near where she lives in San Antonio. And this was one that she was visiting for a little while. In fact, when she had told me she was visiting it, you know, many moons ago, I did the very same thing we're doing now. As I came to the page, I took a look at what do we believe? And, and I was like, well, all right, well, this isn't, this isn't a whole lot. There's not a whole lot. This is it. This is what they believe. And so there's not a whole lot there. Um, but what I think you can do is check off the box of the basics, right? Right. You can understand by reading through this, that this is a, a, uh, a Christian community, uh, but not a whole lot. And that's not to, um, uh, uh, say anything negative about them. It's just not a whole lot. Uh, Hope Presbyterian church doesn't have a whole lot, uh, for that matter. And we'll talk about that momentarily. Um, this was from old first, uh, Tallahassee, Florida, Julie, uh, McBrayer. Did we lose her? Is she, is she gone? Oh, there she is. Okay. Uh, this was, uh, one from Julie and, and actually Julie, I had to, uh, I took your links in. And so here's their statement adopted by session, uh, April of this year. And, um, I'm trying to remember what this, uh, yeah, this is now what they didn't have. Here's, here's what their uh, about us was. Some of these, what you get of the what we believe or our beliefs is couched within their mission, but it's not as explicitly overt. And um, so their mission statement tells you a little bit more about who they are and a little bit more like we worship uh, through word and sacraments gathering, making music, sharing. We make disciples, calling people to repentance, demonstrating God's love, engaging mind, right? Th these are missional statements that are grounded upon what they may believe as a community. And at the larger level, what, who we are as Presbyterians. Um, but within that local community, um, you know, there's not so much of a uh, what we believe page. So what I did take is, uh, as I was going through this, is I did find their their statement on racism, and uh, they published a statement, um, uh, a, a statement of faith, so to speak, like our uh, confession of 1967, or the Belhar confession from the 80s, or the brief statement of faith from the early 90s. They too wrote a confessional statement about racism. Um, we declare ourselves utterly opposed to all forms of systemic racism. We're committed to standing with those, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We will seek out opportunity to oppose all forms of systemic racism and to ensure that Black Lives Matters, as do those of indigenous, Asian, and Latinx people and persons of all colors, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and in this paragraph, they give some uh, more of some of the grounding as to their, their background to lead them to be able to make such a statement of that. that but that unlike, almost, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Unlike some of the other churches we looked at where they've gone through some of those doctrinals or even what we read in those three earlier ones, their website doesn't really have that. So we don't know exactly how high a value, how low a value they may put on very di various different documents, uh, doctrines, or the authority of scripture, as may, one may want to know. Uh, John? Um, it, that almost sounds, that when I read that statement about the, the, the parts about structural racism and stuff, that almost sounds like uh, a statement that they would write to uh, submit their uh, intention to be a Matthew 25 church. Yeah, if you go know. back to the website, it yeah. looks like that little, the Matthew 25, right in the upper right, right under that right little here? circle. Isn't that the Matthew 25? No, that's a, lots of helping hands. Click here to uh, uh, be a part of the helping hands ministry. 
That's okay, what that's but about. it looks like what what PCSA is used for the yeah. Matthew twenty five. So, and yeah. I don't think I, I know whether or not they have that connection. They certainly don't have it promoted on their page. But yeah. uh, all right, I need to move on. Let's see. Let's look at. I don't care about this one about helping hands. Uh, this was yours, John, uh, from when you were a kiddo. Westminster Presbyterian Church in Illinois, uh, is Springfield, right? Yep. Okay. And if you go to the uh, what we believe, here's what they have. If I click on that, what we believe, you come to this page mm -hmm. and you get basically what I've been giving you in my handouts, which you just copy and paste that from what the denomination gives you. Um, um, the brief statement of faith, though, is what I focused on. Right. I'm getting there. Yeah. But that brief statement of faith, that is from the brief statement of faith that is in the book of confessions. Yep. Right. So again, not bad. That's again, like me saying, see Apostles Creed, right? If you go to their, their homepage, though, it has their mission statement, which is sort of like a paragraph. Right. Um, yeah. Um, it's down see. at the bottom. You got to get through a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. Well, that's also a problem. Nobody wants to scroll this much. Oh, here it is. There you go. With each new day, we affirm our common purpose, join the prayerful phrase, and influence participants. Yeah, yeah, that too is, again, while it's a mission statement, it is also a bit of declarative about what we kind of believe as a community. But you will be missing out on some of that doctrinal stuff. Um, uh, and the brief statement of faith is good, but it is um, doesn't carry the weight of that kind of breaking down Here's how we view scripture. Here's how we yeah. hold these values of these various different doctrines. It, while you're there, real quick, look at those two things underneath there. It yeah, says that, care. that they're a PCUSA Earth Care Congregation and a hunger program thing. Is that right. still around? I haven't seen that on. Oh, yeah. Earth Care definitely really? is. Um, um, and we should bring that up to session. But I'm going to. I was going to say, through. why are we not both of those? uh why not baby uh i'll tell you why not that's that's a, that's a conversation for a few that beers really the church they used in home alone was it is that what it said it certainly looks like it it was, it was a beautiful building i remember i mean beautiful large <laughs> building and i don't know man you're weird okay uh tower hill church i can't remember who sent us tower hill was that you dave this was this was the this was not the church I grew up in. This was the rich church across town. Yeah. Who's, who's all of the youth group from this church didn't like it, so they came to our church. Yeah. Because we were the cool kids and we had girls there. Yeah. And and what I isn't that where you met Jeannie? That is where I met Jeannie and got That's married right. there. Yeah. Not this church. This was like I said, this was the other one. Yeah. So uh the only thing I'm gonna pause on this is. Uh, this website didn't have anything to uh, any clues about a statement of faith or and, and all it has under have, vision it has has some stuff but yeah. you're right it's, it's very uh, uh and all you do is go to the bottom and, and the biggest button on the bottom is give generously that's not a bad button um <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it, it, it's just a little, it, it, it's, it's scan. And so, um, that, that might be a challenge for, 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 for folks who are, again, are trying to, trying to figure out I, I, my things in the way and I'm trying to get it out of the way. Um, dang it. All right. There, uh, close, uh, beliefs. Uh, let's see. Oakland Heights Baptist church. This is from Jim Henry. And now you remember the one that Amber had given us uh, from the, the Brethren Church. Uh, here we are, Oakland Heights Baptist Church, and also very similar, right? Uh, let me tell you uh, about Bible, right? They've led off with Bible uh, and without error. And let me tell you where I think this is what they're saying. This is how we support what we just said. Here's my thing about God, about Jesus, uh, about sin, about salvation, about heaven, about uh, Christian life uh, through obedience, and uh, about the church. Uh, what's missing, Jocelyn? Sacraments. There you go. Um, and and that may be that it's just not as a higher value as, as a sacramental church. Uh, um, some Baptist traditions may only observe uh, 
communion a couple of times a year and the sacrament they elevate above the other above communion is baptism uh because that is linked to uh, salvation uh was it gloria that i lost oh there's gloria who was it was it lori lori i think lori sent me san gabriel presbyterian church and uh, uh, Jocelyn and John, this is Bill Peterson's uh, church. Um, and what do we notice here, John, similar to Westminster Presbyterian Church in Springfield, Illinois? It's, it's lifted. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, it's, the yeah. brief, it's the brief statement of faith. And there are many churches that will do that, that will just simply say either the brief statement of faith or see the Apostles' Creed. Now, Not if you went back if you're to a denominational church, if you went to uh, uh, Westminster Presbyterian Church Amarillo, they did say that here are some of those other confessions. They lifted up Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, Westminster Confession, and the Second Helvetic. Uh, or was it Heidelberg? It was Heidelberg. Um, they lifted them up uh, and cited them or said that we also uh, adhere to these as well. Um, but yeah, not, not again, not a whole lot on helping me uh, understand. Now, the uh, Denzins, did y'all send me West Plano? Yeah, y'all sent us West Plano. Now, fascinating about West Plano, like the one that was in New Jersey that Dave Weiss sent, was... Uh, didn't really have a what we believe page uh as far as for articulating what they believe but you want to know your they business. You know, well it's, it's hard right because uh, i'm trying to be faithful and i'm trying to be uh discerning about where to to be a part of a community and what's fascinating and i have never in my life seen this before and uh I, i'm 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 I'm, I'm going to spend some time thinking about it is what they do have like the Tallahassee church that had a statement about racism. They have what honest, they have a statement about honest patriotism. Uh, and that I've never seen before um, grounded in Micah six, eight, what does the Lord require of you? Seek justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God. Uh, we uh, worship here sends us out to the world uh, to support the poor, the hungry, the stranger, the vulnerable through action and advocacy. One form of advocacy is our congregation's statement on honest patriotism based on the document um, uh, in the PCUSA. Working with God's kingdom of human flourishing, West Plano is committed to honest patriotism. It means we affirm and honor the work of citizens of the United States who have chosen public service as their vocation. That was not observed at the Round Rock ISD board meeting last night, just so you know. Uh, we affirm the imperative for honesty in public statements, protection of freedom of speech, the widest public app access, uh, rights of citizens, freedom of assembly, freedom of the press. Uh, we affirm rule of all is inseparable from our reformed commitment to the truth. Woo, that's a good. Uh, we affirm the need for free critical inquiry that is unhampered by censorship. Oh, we affirm the rights of citizens to participate in the democratic process. It's a, fast, it's a fast separation of church and state. Uh, they said enshrined in First Amendment. Uh, so I'm going to say they probably <laughs> hold that as well. It's oh, fascinating. Uh, I, again, I've. I've never seen that before. Uh, and on their page, which doesn't really have a heading other than justice, uh, on their justice page, and this is essentially how we as a church are defining what we understand justice to be. They have the honest patriot, what's that called? Honest, honest patriotism, um, the statement against torture, uh, about voting, about um, gay and lesbian alliance. So in, on their justice page, you get to know who they are and how they serve. So unlike that statement of faith number two, where it kind of just stops off at the Great Commission, their website has a lot to say about after the Great Commission. But if you're reading their website, there's not a whole lot to 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 exegete to 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 receive about all that stuff the old testament stuff and, and the stuff the doctrinal stuff before it and uh, they're too uh, busy out, out doing stuff to worry about that 
I have I have opinions <laughs> it looks on, like <laughs> I have opinions on that as my, as well. Uh, this is my home church uh, or the church that I was a member uh, uh, was married and ordained in. Uh, they don't have a page at all, uh, you know. And this is a church uh, equivalent to Hope, maybe uh, in the Dallas, right in the center of Dallas. And yeah, they don't. I, I couldn't even show you a page because they don't have a page. Uh, articulating what they believe at all. So I just wanted to point that out, that that's, that's how that is. Uh, St. Matthew's, Dave Cook sent us this one. And on their What We Believe page, uh, it, it's pretty succinct. It's, it's, you know, our missional goal, uh, what we have to share, an open-minded, innovative servant community that is accepting of the expression of Christ, who we serve, what we serve, how we serve, and why we serve. You know, it's very succinct. A few bullet points, and um, and 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 there you have it. Uh, uh, you can, yeah, me, Dave. Yeah, let me make a, a quick comment. This is a church that I went to between eighth grade and when I graduated from high school, and they fell on very hard times because the Episcopal priest decided that he did not like where the Episcopal Church was headed to with um, a gay priest. And he counseled his congregation against the homosexual movement, as he called it, and um, and left and took them to an Anglican church. Um, I was very glad to find St. Matthew's still existing because the Episcopal Church sold their building. They now exist yeah. by going to a chapel. And um, some of the things that they, they say about what they believe is just really amazing to me. They even hold worship services in an old Irish pub downtown in Westerville, Ohio, yeah. which yeah. is interesting because Westerville was the um, original place for the Women's Temperance Union. Yeah. Oh, so, that is uh, fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> and and used to be dry when I lived there. But, so, um, so what we have when we have White North Park Presbyterian Church, uh, when you have a page that has a, a little bit of that information, just a small bit of those uh, those uh, clues, the what we have to do then is we have to dig on the whole website, right? We got to look at, oh, yes, they, they do do worship in the pub, which ought to say something to you about who they are and what they're about. And they do these justice actions, which ought to tell you something more about who they are and what they're about, um, uh, even if it's not succinctly written on a what we believe page. And then Riverbend, Gloria sent us this. And uh, unfortunately, um, uh, who is Riverbend? Uh, this is here in Austin. Uh, our message is simple. Come as you are. Well, that's an interesting doctrine. Um, uh, what we value, acceptance, innovation, diversity, encouragement, authenticity. These are, these are good. Um, what we believe, our vision uh, to make Austin a great place for all people as a leading spiritual voice in our community, creating authentic community, celebrating arts in our community, serving our community, championing the message of God's grace. Our purpose is personal. We bless others. Our mission to serve the bruised, battered, broken, and bored, I love it, of our community and the world, reclaiming, restoring, and reproducing for the cause of, reproducing for the cause of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, that's it. That's 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 the what we believe portion, and I'm not sure. Uh, as as uh, this is a nom denominational church, as someone who comes from a long-standing denominational background in the Presbyterian faith and also the Reformed tradition, I need a little bit more meat on the bones for myself. Uh, for myself, would you want to at least go check it out? Who me? Yeah, no. I mean, if you were like looking for it, you know, no, not me. Um, and that's okay. Well, not that's not the a mission judgment. statement of this church is right there in that photograph. This What'd is where say? all the Austin musicians go to church. Every yeah. single one of them. I mean, if I can get, <laughs> if I could wear a hat, maybe. Um, it, you, uh, it, it really is. It's like uh, you know, all the famous Austinites go to this church because it's all about music. Yeah. Um, I also look at the uh, gender makeup of their senior leadership as well. Um, and that usually tells me uh, uh, also as well. And it's not different from hope. Um, uh, uh, 
in, in its past iterations. But um, uh, yeah, the, uh, it's not a, John, answer your question. Uh, uh, this wouldn't be a place from that I would feel connected to. Um, do you remember in our class last Sunday talking about experiential worship versus liturgical worship? right? This would be a more of experiential and I'm a more liturgical flowing kind of guy. So, um, that, that's, that's where this would be, uh, uh different for me. Got so a cool email address though. What is it? It was K R O S S at Riverbend cross. At Riverbend. Oh, I, I get you. I see what you're doing there. Uh, all right. Well, look, I dumped a lot on you guys tonight. I look, well, more than anything, y'all dumped a lot on me. I hope this was good for you. I hope the laboratory was good. Now that we've done some of this, we're going to be getting into some more meaty aspects of these doctrines as we go forward. And you got a little bit of a taste. And tonight, and, and we might maybe refer back to at least one of those three or some of those three. Uh, when we get to our next laboratory, I will also put in a brand new different uh, statement of faith for us to look at. And then we'll have the whole uh, uh, menu of doctrines that we've gone through to, to, to get a little bit more deep into what are they saying? What are they not saying? Um, is this within the reform boundaries? Is it outside? I think y'all did fabulous. I think you know that there was some of this that just doesn't quite fit within the reform tradition. And there was some stuff that, that did. Um, stuff that could be more expansive on the playing field and stuff that was really, um, you know, that kind of hit all the spots. So um, I hope that was good. Any, any final thoughts before, uh, who was it, Jocelyn? Was it? It was Mike. He's gone. Oh, he did drop out that punk. Uh, uh, Jocelyn said she'd pray for us uh, as our special guest. Any final thoughts tonight? Was this okay? Did you? Oh, look at that puppy, Dave. Oh, um, uh, not you, Dave. Other Dave. Uh, uh, any any final thoughts? Was this okay for you guys? Was this was this okay? Does this make sense? Yeah. Very good. Amber, Julie, Lori, uh, I can't see if you're nodding or not. Y'all want to add anything before we close out? Listen. You're not going to. Okay, or not. That's good. I, I, no, I, I oh. just wanted to say I I appreciate how receptive everyone was to my thoughts. I it, it, this, this was a lot coming into today. There was a lot to absorb, and I didn't open the email until this morning. So um, I never yeah. read a statement of faith until about 12 hours ago. So I this was a crash course. So Oh, good. I, so it, it, this was really interesting just to have such a huge source of knowledge and everyone else in the class as well as the people leading Th this was just a really good experience tonight so oh, i wanted to thank say you. thank you good. no you 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 rolled i mean and don't mm -hmm. feel bad dave cook didn't even look at it until class started so uh <laughs> that was me that was so, her. uh uh so oh, who sent you the first one <laughs> oh yeah i know you did you you hit me up pretty quick he texted me all right, well, do you want to pray, email. teacher's pet? Uh, no, I'm kidding. All right, let's get out of here. Hey, Jesus Christ next week, and it's going to be great. So uh, be there, be square. De uh, Jocelyn? Okay, we're going to end the prayer and the Lord's Prayer together, so take yourselves off mute because I don't want to be the only one saying at the end. Oh, you want everyone to unmute. Okay. Unmute, please. Okay. So when we say the Lord's Prayer at the end, we'll all be together. Okay, let's bow our heads. Dear gracious God, we lift our hearts up to you in thanksgiving and gratitude. You show us light in the darkness and lead us always towards understanding, forgiveness, and redemption, offering us your love and mercy. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us tonight. Be with us as we go about our week, uniting us together as one family in Christ. As we say the prayer, as we pray the prayer your son taught us, 
our Father who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pentecost, baby. Pentecost, right there. Forever. Forever. <laughs>